ProPublica got their hands on 14 hours of training videos for Project 2025. <laughs> and it's fantastic. Wow. And I think we should probably, is there a link that they can donate to ProPublica? Because, yeah, they should give, they give them some, some love if you can. That's a, that's a, a great haul. I'm going to drop this in the, in the live chat here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. So without further ado, because this thing's kind of long, I don't know how much we're going to get into it. It's like 45 minutes long. I don't think we'll get through the whole thing. At least now we won't get through the whole thing with Ember, which is kind of. No, <laughs> yeah. no. That they, Remember, the, the formula for reviews is the video length times the number of reviewers plus one. So that, that would be a three hour <laughs> show right there. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting through this, but we'll see how much we can get through. And I will speed it up from the get-go to 1.25 just to, to maybe offset some of that. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, so you got ProPublica publishing this video unedited. The Heritage Foundation did not respond to requests. Hi, I'm Katie Sullivan and just a normal American woman. But to the left, that makes me a cisgendered ethno-imperialist birthing person with pronouns she her words like that are quite right off the bat this woman can kiss my ass seriously like <laughs> we come from a society where you like oh i'm a white anglo christian or what what is it wasp a white anglo you think anglo saxon, anglo -Saxon, -Saxon yeah. protestant and yeah please, there you go no no wasp bashing i i, I know I think you I are to, i'm not strong enough <laughs> You're my wasp queen. I, I just love that she equates white with ethno-imperialism. In her mind, being a European-descended person means you are an imperialist. So, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I'm trying to fix something real quick. She's giving away the game right. already. Sorry. Crazy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Roll it. <laughs> it keeps kicking me back over to the different microphone and making it drop. Hold on. Oh. I'm so annoyed. That's Live right. programming, folks. Every freaking week, though, it does this to me. It's I'm getting tired of it. It's like, uh, get your together, dude. Um, what is that seal in the background? Is that President of the United States? Is she like pretending know. to be in the Oval Office right now? Uh, it sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like I uh, mean, it's out of focus, but it's got the right number of letters. Hmm. I love how she's got the giant cross as like her only jewelry. Like, trust mm -hmm. me, I'm Christian. Believe me. Yeah. Symbolism Before is important for on. these people. Well, it's all about, I guess, Christian nationalism, right? Mm-hmm. In the eyes of many That's in the world, really this every four-year ceremony we accept as normal is nothing less than a miracle. In America, we understand that a nation is only living as long as it is striving. Boy. Only a We're few cancel all the have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. This great nation will endure as it has endured. We'll revive and we'll prosper. Whether we go forward together with How courage, long is or this turn intro back thing? policies that weakened our economy, <laughs> diminished our leadership in the world, America's future will be in your hands. Okay. I spent a lot of money on that stock footage. Right, I'm worried that the music's gonna be gonna get us pulled down <laughs> on that intro, though, because <laughs> I, I I just I can't see the Heritage Foundation not being cheap on their on what music that they use, right? Well, that's that's the thing, is if it's a custom track, it won't be in YouTube's content ID. Hmm. Yo, transition project? Whoa. <laughs> right? <laughs> Are you children? I'm giving up the game. All right, so we got Bethany Cosma, former deputy chief of staff, USAID. Monsters in the attic Agency under the bed. International yeah, Development. they have been, but we always tell them that they do not exist. Today we have news. There are monsters in Uncle Sam's attic. It's the world. No. We're the monsters, guys. <laughs> Aren't we scary? Right. Show them your claws. <laughs> <laughs> Birds. 
phrases, definitions that are used, which may look like one thing, but absolutely mean another. And it is scary. <laughs> During this oh, training, they would know we about will that, identify they? the problem, discuss examples from our time in the federal government, as well as the five cross-cutting principles of the current administration. We will teach you how to unwind the words and phrases that have been so artfully layered into every document in the federal government. You can do this in any role at any level. Of Crazy priority. how they can't call it dog whistling because that's what they do. It's, it's, it, <laughs> I was telling staff, I was like, this is new speak uh, because yeah, they, they, they I, go I was through just a, thinking that. You can't Control say the this language. word. You can't say that word. You can't say this word. We need to say these words right. instead. We're, they're, they're, they're dividing our language. It's crazy. <laughs> this training will prepare you to make changes and fast. The left continually pivots and assaults definitions and phrases. They twist words and phrases to support subconscious acceptance of a philosophy that was rejected or is against the grain of human existence. Like, what is- Hell yeah, I'm against the grain of human existence. That's what I'm all about. It's like, it's 2024, we don't have to follow. Well, <laughs> we can customize our bodies death now. Death cultists. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, remember, Speaking... the, the, the core of Christian nationalism is the Seven Mountains Dominionism, which is mm. a fundamentally accelerationist enterprise. These people are literally trying to bring about the end of the world. They think that's what will bring Jesus back. Yeah, and I don't think we should be the putting fuck? them in charge of anything if that's their goal. <laughs> like, let's end the world. Yeah, let's put these people in charge of our future. And then you got, uh, I don't know, this off topic a bit, but today I heard Charlie Kirk was saying that about... Uh, like people without kids and stuff don't care about the future. People who are waiting for Jesus to come back don't care about the future. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting about this one little comment was that it's automatically basically dehumanizing people that don't agree with them, rejected by humanity. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. That, that's laying out the agenda right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and 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 they're about to go in. I, I, from what this sounds like, they're about to go into exactly how we're doing that. But we're yeah, not. yeah, it's funny because they're going to police la but see, language by explaining how it works. What, you know, it's like I'm not going to try to dehumanize these people. I believe that they're tragically human and have tragically bad ideas. And so I don't. But right off the bat. It's a conversation stopper. We're not going to talk to these people. We're going to attack them as and attack their humanity. Right from the jump. Yeah. Well, there's, there's othering from the very beginning. I was already up to the left yeah. did this, you know. What is a woman? Perhaps the <laughs> most effective tool. What a, the left what a, what a point to start on. What is a woman? That's been their battle cry. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how the right wing crumbles when you ask them what a chair is. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. funny you mention that because I was just watching a, a video today uh, that covered your video about conservatives being confused about chairs. I can't remember <laughs> who the hell it was that was covering it, though. <laughs> well, the chairs, well, that's Graham, Gr Graham Linehan's the... Yeah, it was Graham's tweet, but yeah. uh, Naomi made a, a video saying, you know, conservatives are awfully confused. They don't know what a woman is. They don't know what a chair is. What are we to make of the world today? <laughs> yeah. Somebody, so this, did somebody dunk on Naomi? Oh, it oh, was, never. It was never. Uh, autogynephilia guy. Uh, Ray, oh, was that Ray, Ray, Ray Williams? Ray Blanchard? No, it's like Ray <laughs> William Johnson Blanchard. or something like that. Ray Johnson Williams? Uh, you know, something like, like that, yeah. yeah. You know, I think like, you'd get extra points if, if you got Blanchard himself to dunk on him. That, 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 that would be a huge time. Blanchardite, like though. A, well, did Blanchard even stand by freaking that autogynephilia after it was re uh, oh, yeah. reviewed? He stood by oh, Blanch it. Blanchard's still on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's still on it. He's he's Yeah, he's still on that case. It's like not he, a thing. He, he and... <laughs> Yeah, he, him, and and uh, J, J. Michael Bailey. They're still they're these guys. That shit came out when I was transitioning, right? Came out almost exactly yeah, at that time, you know, the, yeah. right around well, nineteen ninety six, seven, eight in in that 
time frame and the man who would be queen was published and it was that was the topic of conversation that we had going on amongst one another it's like i can you believe this garbage you know yeah. it, it, and and you know to see it revived with the with the uh turfs <laughs> with the ad with the advent of this particular uh more virulent transphobia uh i mean it just blows your mind it's a won't this shit go away <laughs> i do enjoy how much the transphobes counter each other all the damn time like um you know helen joyce um she's been a a, a busy lady lately since every other transphobe has had to stop tweeting um she's making all <laughs> the appearances that? Oh no! Uh, who knows? What's it's a mystery. What's wrong, but, uh, GK? She got asked uh, in an interview recently, um, you know, with with the resurgence in public awareness of, of of autogynephilia, what her thoughts on it were. And the one thing I like about Helen is, as as much as she's full of shit, when she thinks the people she's talking to are full of shit, she'll say so to them. And she was like, "It doesn't make any damn sense." Like, if you're sexually attracted to yourself as a woman and you start transitioning, during that period where your hormones are shifting over, your sex drive disappears. And then you're no longer attracted to anything. So why the fuck would you continue to transition? Right. It's not a, it's an identity thing. It's that, that... also <laughs> untrue. <laughs> and silly. It's kind of silly. Just, uh is their ability to engage in constant subliminal advertising through their narrative words and phrases. Marxism became socialism, then democratic socialism, and is now represented by the terms social justice and equity. This is perhaps the most... <laughs> Communism is equity, basically. DEI is just, is just equity and... and uh... So we're, we're three generations down into into neoconservatism, and you can really, really tell well, because when Reagan was on the stage, socialism meant racial equality. When they said socialism, they meant something very different from what economists meant. But now she thinks that it's Marxism light, apparently. Yes, is McCarthyism right? I mean, <laughs> everybody's the only thing called Kamala Harris a communist. What's the quote? It's like socialism is when the government does stuff and communism is when the government does a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or the government does stuff I don't like. <laughs> Scary of all. Oh, Katie, yeah. what brings to mind is the quote, he who controls the language rules the world. It's attributed to Joseph Stalin and other tyrants. And George Orwell stated, he and who others. controls language controls... How, how long do you all think we're going to get into this video before Hitler is brought up? <laughs> how... I don't know if, if we're going on a Stalin angle and they may stick with it because, you know, communism is scary or something. Yeah, but the Nazis were communists, too. Or socialist. It's right there in the name. SS, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how that works. Just like how North Korea is a republic or the China's a republic. And, you know, mm -hmm. all right. And, yeah. North Korea is democratic. Culture. Even more, Hitler and others lived by the creed. There if it is. If you a lie often enough, people <laughs> no, will believe it. Without I, I've watched it this far. I knew that was there, but still. <laughs> oh, you che you cheated. You already yeah, Well, got four, four minutes for Godwin. That's pretty good for a conservative training video. It's true. Language is a powerful and often controlling tool. Career bureaucrats and the left are also using language to change culture and gain more and more authority, thereby upsetting the balance of power. Wait, who are these people that talk about career bio bureaucrats? Bio like, isn't right. that their whole thing? Right? <laughs> like, my experience as a career bureaucrat, my experience. I'll tell you. <laughs> and, and we're using language to change the culture, folks. Instead of, I guess, semaphore? No, that would be a language too, wouldn't it? Well, we know. Um, how... we're, we're, we should draw pictures in the dirt. That's, well, you know, that's how we should communicate. You know how rigid language is, how they never change in their structure. Uh, oh, usage. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard once once a, a definition is in the dictionary, that's what it means forever. To everyone. Always. And in all languages, fathers. even. All languages. This, in essence, weaponized language against 
the American people. This training is vital to you as a political appointee. If there's one okay. thing you take from this training, it is to know when you start your job. I'm as gonna a bounce ahead a little bit. Every, every word has before publishing or moving forward with any official or internal document. All right, so now that we have identified the problem, let's give the viewers a taste of what we saw in the Trump administration. Bethany and I were both part oh, of a no. coordinated effort in the Trump administration focused on trying to take back hijacked language and definitions across the United States government. So they were doing exactly the thing they're accusing the left like, of doing. Yeah, they're saying, we did this, so we know it, that people do this, so now we're saying they're doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We know it happens because we're the ones that did it. <laughs> so this is, did, did, I, did they both work for AID? Let's say AID. I know the redheaded lady did. I don't know what the the blonde lady with the the glasses. Uh, I, I wonder if I wonder if one of them worked for HHS because that's exactly what they did. The, the, the reason I I got active, I I was quite happily in a in a closet with better clothes uh, from <laughs> you know from nineteen well after going through the whole coming up process uh, from like two thousand one or so until 2018 at which point uh trump's hhs decided to write into the federal register uh language defining sex as immutable and assigned at birth i like uh, that uh... And that got me that got me going i i, I just you know i i I, uh, I did a whole long post on facebook and twitter and told all my friends look it this is going to hurt people like me uh this is gonna hurt your friend i hope you do something about it they never got it they never managed to get that through uh and uh but they will they they if they get if they have the chance they get back into power that's one of the first things they'll do they've promised to do that oh yeah they're they're already doing it in as many states as they can get away with it in Yeah, I was just gonna read. Uh, what I said I liked wasn't that what you what that that the, the gross thing you just said. I was reading uh, the conservative. Stop using your BS jargon. It offends me. And then also conservative. Speak conservatees. Yeah. In the United Nations, from our experiences, we will teach you how to identify the left's progressive language scrutinize career staff compositions for dangerous language and dangerous how to combat language. their manipulative efforts. Yeah, these, these like words can't hurt you types are going to mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. tell us what language is dangerous. It wasn't dangerous. It's kind of like how they put, made, made cis a slur on Twitter, but you can still drop it in bomb, apparently, mm -hmm. uh, according to Andrew Tate anyway. Well, that's just free speech. Yeah, absolutely. Free Absolute free speech. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how fascism works is you you scream free speech while you censor everything you can. Hey, Bree. Clarity of death. Yes, ma'am. Is it OK to show Beaver on screen? Nice. Yeah, there you go. That's adorable. Is that an authentic main beaver? I don't know. Could be. You just, yeah. <laughs> Definition and conservative intention. Bethany and I are going to give you some examples of what we mean by this need to always ensure clarity. But in no way are we able to foresee the future and anticipate how the progressive left will continue to co-opt even more words and definitions. We can tell you the words and phrases being used today, but by the time you enter the administration, these examples may be obsolete. This will help you spot. You mean language ev might evolve is what she's saying. Beware, language is going to oh, evolve. Oh, evolution's not real. <laughs> Crucial issue areas to pay close attention to. We do not know what they will be calling men and women by the time you begin your tenure with the administration. Oh, the left is trying to then why did you say America men and women and rebuild it in their own <laughs> image by using the art of deception and words and definitions are their weapon of choice. Uh, 
Remember, words change culture. Bethany, with your extensive experience with both domestic and international policy issues, and in light of your role in, a lead in leadership positions at USAID, can you walk us through some examples of how the left uses words, weaponizes really, words and definitions? Uh, and if you could do that in a context- You know what weaponized word? Woke. <laughs> no flake? Yeah of the cross-cutting issues that are identified in the mandate for leadership. Uh, and, and really, as we understand, the cross-cutting issues were identified because they are the pillars of the Biden administration. And so they've been layered into virtually every document right. in the- Happy to, absolutely. The five topic areas for today's discussion are centered on women, children, and family, environment, human rights and border security, the gender cult, and equity. The first topic, women, the children, and family. I work all right, you guys, what do you all say we jump ahead to the gender right. cult chapter? Sorry, women, you're not do, included in the gender cult, I guess. Do, okay. do, we, do we have a cult song? I don't know. Let's let's jump. So we got I mean, five I mean they're topics. making they this shit up. Song. They got to tell us what our hymnal says. But yeah, men, men and women, this not genders. Nope. Where do we get the gender cult? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm getting my tits back out. I wish they'd show you right. what's like this so was divided into chapters or something. national issues and very closely followed the language presented at the United Nations. And I saw up close and personal how this indeed is true. <coughs> language is used to control culture. I'll never forget a conversation I had with the chief of staff at USAID. We are trying to provide alternative language for the highly controversial phrase comprehensive sexuality education or CSE which at the United Nations had come to mean not just typical sex education, but instead had been morphed into teaching and normalizing sex at very early ages, even as young as preschool. What? Yeah, that's not what that means. <sighs> and, and also, what does she mean by normal sex education? Because as I recall, most of their constituencies are an abstinence only sort. So what is normal? Is it don't? Okay, on to home ec. You know, what What are we right. doing here? What are we talking about here? I think that they she, just, they decided it should end with I, an anatomy lesson. Like, this is the penis, and this these are the testicles, and this is the labia, and this is the vulva, and all right. Uh, now that's it's so on. crazy that she's relating, like, any kind of sex education with, like, teaching kids how to have sex at, like, whatever age. Because, like, the kind of conference of sex education model at preschool basically just be, like, stranger danger. Like, here's how to recognize if you're being abused. Right, and this is mm -hmm. the same is narrative. Is the person wearing a giant cross? This Tell is your the, parents. <laughs> this is the, the the lives a TikTok angle, right? Of, of approaching these topics to just be outraged about the education process that we have in place for uh, for our schools. I, I can't yeah. imagine Oklahoma everything is has, pornography. I can't imagine Oklahoma has too much left for their sex ed programs well i mean they only have one textbook and it's the bible so yeah. um they, actually there's quite a lot of sex come to think of it <laughs> yeah good old uh good old ryan walters made sure that they learn about horse emissions but they can't late learn about <laughs> learn about human emissions and for girls who became pregnant that abortion was a preferable method of birth control back to the conversation with the chief of staff he suggested several alternatives that each time I told him that, unfortunately, the, his recommended edit was also interpreted as CSE. Frustrated, he vented. They have literally co-opted the English language. And it was at that moment that I realized that the progressive left is controlling the language, redefining definitions, and by doing so, are ruling the world. On a positive note, despite all the Hell angst yeah. that we... Re we redefining world, definitions. Yeah. But also, we already rule the world. That's that's why ostensibly a new Republican administration is coming into office and needs these trading videos because the left is so powerful. We're unstoppable. We rule the world. Fascism is so fun, isn't it? Where you got to be, we got to be uh, strong and weak at the same time. Exactly. We we did succeed on that negotiation. DevEx published an article with the headline: No mention of reproductive rights in declarations out of G7 development ministerial. You can read more about this in the course materials section. Do they celebrate taking away, taking uh, reproductive rights away from the, the language 
It's just so, so crazy. Uh, how is that something to celebrate? Yeah, have, have they read their own book? They're doing this for Project 20, 2025, right? And they... They will become property. They're, they're working towards their own actual enslavement. But yeah, okay, tell me more about how the left is evil. Go for it. It's the green dress lady from uh, from The Handmaid's Tale, right? <laughs> the green dress lady. Aunt, Aunt Lydia? Uh, no, Did you the... ever read the sequel? I have not. <laughs> oh, it's fascinating. There's a, there's a lot more to Aunt Lydia than you might think. Can we squeeze 15 more minutes out of you, Amber? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she has an early shift on the East Coast, so she gets uh, up before I'm going to bed usually, most days. <laughs> It's, it's harsh, but... Now, let's talk about the word abortion. The left got very creative years right. ago and started using... Part, different... though. Come on. Now, I always understood that climate change meant seasons. Our climate oh, does change all the time. <laughs> oh, but of course, my that's goodness. Not what's we meant cannot go, like, ten seconds without them saying of, something uh, about fucking the words terminally stupid. I always thought climate change was about seasons. She actually said that. That's like not a parody of what she said. Those words came out of her mouth. I wonder. <laughs> I I wonder if they realize that the Earth is round and <laughs> that it's actually spring in the southern hemisphere right now. So does well, that mean we have two no different staff. climates? Your, your globalist agenda counters uh, the that's Bible, it. That's and it. I will have yeah. you know. This is the unchanging, inerrant word of the all-powerful, perfect goat herder. And it has Four never corners. been translated. <laughs> it was written in English I, by Jesus himself. I, I've, been dis I've been disappointed uh, since, the, uh, since the 1600s when they, when they, changed, when they changed Guy from a, uh, from a man's name to generalize it to guy box <laughs> so you know it's that, like yeah. how dare they appropriate how dare they appropriate these things those leftists they've been working on this since elizabethan times in it's true. in in the environment That's a great point katie they don't stop Climate change allegedly is everywhere. And if the American Human people elect border, a conservative president in the administration, well, I don't care where you are in the administration, you will deal oh, with the word gender. Folks, Speaking did you know sex, the climate the is like all around about. the world? The whole world's affected by climate? No way. I know. It's it's like there's freaking weather or something out there. I don't know. <laughs> Wild. Is sex assigned at birth. Now, I just told you to use the word sex, and you oh. may think that sex assigned at birth, that sounds great. Well, actually, it's not. It's the left's attempt to change biological fact and to try to normalize their belief that biological sex can change. Unfortunately, many folks, including... They made this before the Imani Khalif situation, though. So, they, they, the, 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 yeah. where they draw the line on uh, assigned at birth, they can be wrong, apparently. If you look too masculine once you mature, it means that they were wrong to assign you female at birth. The well, the other funny thing is that the like the assigned sex at birth terminology was originally created for intersex people because we recognize that like mm -hmm. sometimes we assigned them incorrectly at birth. Yeah, yeah, they're like in terms. And how did we? And how like did that. we? How did we learn that we assigned them incorrectly? Because we asked them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, it it, it 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 all falls apart. You know, it's like well. I loved uh, Dawkins' interview with Helen Joyce when they're going on about uh, uh, exceptions that prove the rule. And, and, and I, th no, the exceptions demolish the rule. It, you know, you, you've made this rule up and it's an inadequate rule because it doesn't take into account the variety of, of, uh, of the way human genes are expressed in the presence of, of hormones uh, and, and you know all of this stuff those exceptions invalidate the argument it, it, it's oh god it's so frustrating it's a whole other rant though yeah i know 
including solid conservatives, have accepted this and don't understand the danger in using this term. In fact, <laughs> some conservatives have even so, taken this term she's and so changed mad. it slightly. Some it's the danger. Mm -hmm. the, the, so those angry. naughty words are going to get you. Help, I'm in danger. This has got to be, this is at least got to be JP's sister. I, I'm telling you. It's awakening with JP's Yo. sister. Yo! <laughs> I see it, I see it. Thank you! It's revealed at birth. The left is infiltrating our conservative organizations, Christian schools, and even churches. We must always be on guard. And when a new term is introduced, ask, what is the genesis for this new term? And why was it introduced? If you see the term sex assigned at birth, delete it and replace it with biological sex. <laughs> the next issue under gender yeah, that's is not gonna pronouns. Work out. Don't and fall also, into the progressive left's trap in regard to pronouns. Controlling the language is evil. Here's how to control the language. Right. This is a whole video about how to about how to do the proper news speak and and how they're trying to control the language. <laughs> we were always at war with East Asia. All right. Here is the uh, here's here's the pronoun I, I, section. I was hoping we'd get to before we lost you, Amber. Use them in email signature blocks on LinkedIn, and absolutely do not ask people what their pronouns are on your first day on the job. When I was at USAID, managers were giving training and were told that when they have new staff or have a staff meeting, they should go around the room and ask everyone what their pronouns are. Katie, if that happened to you, what would you do? I think political appointees, Bethany, great question. Uh, what would you do, Katie, if they asked you what your pronouns were? Uh, I've been in... I mean, she answered that in the intro of the video. She's, you know, an ethno-imperialist birth giver or some <laughs> crap. Yeah. Like, they act like, that's the Anna Kasparian BS. That the, Nobody's saying you have to be called a birthing person. It's just saying that using the term birthing person will encompass... Trans men who might get pregnant as well. I just, I still just want to know who called Anna a birthing person and like set that whole thing off. Like, I just need to know that. I, I, that the, would be nice to know. I think as, it was Benny. As the months <sighs> go on, I'm beginning to think it was somebody with money who convinced Anna that oh, she was mad about. Rager. Yeah. The because, same way he got to Dave Rubin. Yeah need to expect conspiracy theory but you know it is what it is that they I mean, are going it makes to be more tested sense by than the clear shit they staff come up with. the day they walk in so that question every political appointee should be prepared to deal with and answer whether it's in a training i don't think it'll take that long it probably will be the first couple days on the job so a political Damn, appointee that's a long answer i just know what she heard they're empowered right if you do, if you tell me that you don't do you don't do pronouns, I'm gonna they them you for the rest of the time that we interact, because yeah, that's just poli impolite, I guess. Powered because they are absolutely put in the position, whatever level it is, in order to uh, in order to implement the president's agenda, and that is the business of a political they appointee. It should be a, the business of all federal employees. So the answer is simple. I, I don't know what We're he's talking about. To implement the president's priorities and agenda, we are not here to discuss pronouns. The next topic is gender. So how do I address you then? How do we address Karen if we don't know her pronouns? <laughs> well, you, Even you though she gave them at the beginning to, to everybody else, but like if we were in the office with her, we wouldn't know how to to approach Karen and say, um, or know which bathroom Ka that Karen's allowed in. How do we even know? Right. How how are the genital police standing guard at the toilet stall door supposed to know what to look for? We do it the way the Nazis did in, at the 1936 Olympics. We make her strip. That seems much more dignified. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Hold on to your dignity, right? Affirming care. Is, that, affirming what care is that what the kids what the are calling it today? <laughs> dignity, yeah. <laughs> Biden administration is promoting, is absolutely infuriating, especially as for parents. We need to be protecting our children from these harmful, sterilizing puberty blockers, cross sex hormones, and permanent genital mutilation. That's what. Or <laughs> JP has just gotten really good at his drag. We're talking about pronouns. Well, we're, we, we're we, just we switched going over right to off the deep gender end. affirming care now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Once you start using pronouns, it's like a gateway drug to crotch <laughs> surgery. 
If you're asked um, about hormones, you immediately got to start talking about genital mutilation. Like that's the that's the only way. Yeah, it's true. We 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 have to make make the stakes clear. I just love it when these fuck nuts complain about puberty blockers, though. Like, th this is what I mean. Like the thing earlier, they're so far down the chain of of made up bullshit and nonsense. They don't even know the made up bullshit and nonsense from the previous generation of assholes. The puberty blockers are for them. Youth transition, it, it's not a required step. That whole give the kid time shit. Their own data shows that 95% of kids who start puberty blockers continue on to, on to HRT. It's a 5% desistance rate. We're just fine without using the damn things. If the kids want to go straight to hormones, they should fucking be able to. But because they raise a stink about what if they're wrong, what if they're going to change their mind, which their own data shows they pretty much don't, okay, fine, we'll give them puberty blockers, give them a couple years to think about it, just so you can feel confident in their self-knowledge, Karen. So that's the compromise. We let puberty blockers be put into the process as a compromise with these fucknuts. And now they're mad about the puberty blockers because they don't realize that was for them in the first place. <laughs> Fucking get rid of them. I'm glad to. What gender affirming care is not care at all. The idea that gender is fluid is evil and it is a major initiative of the evil. It's evil. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you guys, I told you guys this was gonna be. Wow, this it's is not. Bad, it's right. not gender neutral. It's gender evil. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I we've got the fucking gender alignment chart out there. <laughs> I know. Well, we've got Finster being gender chaotic. So yeah, it makes sense. We need to like set up the exorcism, exorcism, something like that. Evil. Of the Biden administration. It's layered into each and every office, document, task force, and funding priority. Perhaps most commonly known are the changes to Title IX, giving institutions, schools, control over children and their gender preference, working against parents, mandating boys no, compete. No, against no, no, no. The, the schools don't have control over the children and their gender preference. And also, the Title IX extensions are the result of the conservative Supreme Court's decision about Title VII. It's just a consistency thing. <laughs> but details. See, that's why I wanted to make sure that you were still here while we got to the when we got to this part. Well, don't don't you know that gender's assigned at school? Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your kindergarten teacher says, "Hmm, what are we gonna assign you?" And you can change it. You can change it uh, as needed. Uh. Against girls, this is all done with words. Words matter. Change the words. Change the culture. Now, Katie, I know that you've written several wonderful pieces on equity and you've done a lot of research on this and the Biden administration has- Who wants to bet Katie has the best takes on equity that you can imagine? I mean, <laughs> just she's had such good takes it's... about everything else so far. I can't, I, I can only- oh. I, I would <laughs> just gonna... love it if, if Sharon over here, whatever the fuck her name is, she said, I, I'm sure you've written so many pieces about equity, yada, yada, yada. But fuck you, we're not covering them because you don't believe in equity. So I'm keeping all the time. Uh, I think it's it's Katie and Sharon, <laughs> and together they make Karen. I'm, and I'm digging that. I'm really rolling with that. Like, like kind of a Captain Planet sort of thing that they do. Oh, we're we're shipping them. Yeah. Hell oh, yeah. oh, Scissor Sisters. Oh my gosh. For shame. <laughs> That's be like th that Moms for Liberty lady. That, well, there ain't no tits on the radio, but uh, uh, the. The, the thing in, about these discussions that always tears at my heart is that the, chi the children are being, the children affected are being left out. They're being others. They're being made to feel like they're not who they are. And there aren't a tremendous number of people that are seriously discordant between their uh, 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 their phenotype and their gender identity. Just not. Most kids develop a sense of gender identity when between the ages of three and five. 
And most kids are perfectly comfortable with that. They don't have fancy words to describe it. They have boy. They have girl. They have, but for the people that are uncomfortable with that, those kids are the ones that are getting left in the cold. And some of us know what that feels like. These buggers don't care how uncomfortable those children are and, and uh, what they want to do is make them even more uncomfortable. Yeah, that's an important thing to keep in mind is uh, there's that saying that every accusation by a conservative is actually a confession. When you're dealing with full-on fascists, everything they say, it's opposite day. Just invert it. When they say protect the children, they mean we're going to throw the children under the fucking bus or off the cliff. It's biblical. Smash them on the rocks. You know, whatever. We're... We're... We're gonna make we're gonna make sure that the children that make us uncomfortable that we can't deal with that we can't wrap our heads around how it is possible for for this to be a phenomenon we're just simply gonna deny that the phenomenon exists and we're going to make those children pay and pay and pay throughout their lives so that a child like me born in 1953 has to wait has to has to be taught self-loathing yeah that took years of therapy to straighten out <laughs> straighten out i think it's cruel i think it's mm -hmm. absolutely cruel and it's something that we've learned over the course of the last 70 years that it is in fact cruel it's intentionally want to go back cruel. To well, I, I literally confessed that I was a girl when I was three and a half. So that's when it started. And it just, you know, that, that, was, the, that, was, a, that was a bad education. I kept saying, hey. <laughs> Has infiltrated equity into everything. What are your thoughts on equity for the next administration? Well, it's a little heart stopping, Bethany, and it's going to take a lot to rewind uh, where we are right now with this, um, with the left's definition of equity and how that's layered into all federal government documents. Roger Severino states it perfectly in the Project 2025 Mandate for Leadership book. Quote, under President Biden, the mission has shifted from promoting equity in everything we do, end quote, for the sake of, quote, populations sharing a particular characteristic including race, sexuality, gender identification, ethnicity, and a host of other categories. Does that sentence make sense? <clears throat> What's the sentence? That whole quote is a sentence. It's one big sentence. I, I oh, don't wow. think the first part connects to the second part. Yeah, the, uh... <laughs> Well, this, how is this not a call for an ethno state? Just looking at it, just looking at this uh, face value, what's being said here. How is it not a call for an ethno state? I don't, uh, or th 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 that they're disparaging here, right? I don't know what the fuck they're asking for here. Okay, it, me... it's, sent, it's, it's word salad. Under President Biden, the mission has shifted to promoting equity in everything we do for the sake of of populations sharing a particular characteristic, including race, sexuality, gender identification, ethnicity, and a host of other categories. Like, what does that even mean? I'm reminded by, by I'm reminded of Bob Dylan's song, My Back Pages. It's not equity, but it might as well be equality I said the words as if a wedding vow, uh, but I was so much older then. I'm younger than that now. I mean, I, I, it is hard to fathom what these folks have think they have lost in uh, in dismantling 
uh, de jure segregation and doing at least an, a half-assed effort at dismantling uh, de facto segregation. Uh, I mean, it, would you, I would have to ask him, is today's Atlanta better or worse than Atlanta of 1954? I'm also curious what they mean by the mission has shifted. What did it shift from? What was the yeah. equity? Was it an equity mission? What was it before it shifted? Like, yeah, if it, if it wasn't it was about be, my guy. If, if equity wasn't about race, sexuality, gender, and ethnicity, what was it about before it shifted to that? Yeah, all all I'm getting from this quote is like, equity is when diversity, therefore bad. Like that, that's mm -hmm. full stop, right? right? Like I can I can be more succinct End than point. them. Come on, guys. <laughs> Equity no longer means all men are created equal, the cornerstone of our U.S. Constitution, but rather now mandates the government it to dispense was with unequal the treatment in order of to Declaration of Independence. <laughs> they don't know their own founding documents. You haven't read your books, guys. These are the people that wrap themselves in the American flag. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm impressed, honestly, that such a high-ranking member is so fucking ignorant. That's that's really imp They are so anti-intellectual. They're actually <laughs> she, getting she, dumber. <laughs> she's also just like equity. Equity no longer means something that equity has never meant. Like what? <laughs> yeah, it was the when was the definition of equity? All men are created equal. Never. <laughs> <laughs> never. To achieve what they believe to be equal outcomes. This ah. means divisiveness, not equality. There is no unification under these principles. It is more of a competition of what class is more of a victim. Or so is that peace, particular class freedom is receive. slavery. No. Equity is division. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is there's no, no, no equality under uh, equality of outcomes. There's no equality in equality. What are you talking about? <laughs> Up is down. We've always been at war with East Asia. <laughs> uh, keep, keep that callback flowing. Receive the preferential treatment being handed out and mandated by the Biden administration. It's important to note that the very first executive order that President Biden uh, signed just moments after his inauguration on January 20th of 2021. What is it? What is it? What is the, the mandate? Let's hear some guesses. Moments after his inauguration, standing in the rain, taking in the crowd, uh, the, the, the interviews with her. No, nope, we're putting it all on hold. We have to run inside and sign an executive order real quick. We'll come back for the press yeah. after. What could possibly be that important? Uh, Taco Tuesday. Yeah. The, so, yeah, the border, open border. There we go. Because we got we to gotta import those tacos. That's right. The only don't want white guy tacos, yeah. which really is offensive to people like Matt Walsh, apparently. I don't know if y'all really caught up on that or not. I really the taco trucks on every corner, though. I really do. I love taco truck. I'm just mm. loving all the conservatives being trickered little snowflakes about the white guy tacos. I know, that's just, right? That's just my, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's my retribution. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot, speaking of retribution, we're celebrating a fortnight of silence from J.K. Rowling today, too. A full, a yeah. Full, yeah, it's been a full 14 days. Um, Love it. So. Uh, do, you, do you suppose she's observing Transgender History Month? <laughs> I doubt it. But, you know, we could all sing the Marseillaise, you know. It's a, Vive la France, says, says I, you know. It, it took an entire nation state to suck that, shut that woman up. <laughs> uh, excuse me excuse me madame uh, you make the tweet we lock you up who would have thought Sorry, that, that was... a children's author would have taken the torch from margaret thatcher right mm -hmm. <laughs> all right let's give them a couple more minutes here to try to make a case and then we gotta say good night to ember so she can get some sleep to do with equity mm -hmm. The left applauded as Biden announced his number one priority, which is advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities throughout the federal government. A horror. As part of that executive order. And they act like redlining <laughs> doesn't exist, right? Like it's the end of America. If if we don't <laughs> redline, America doesn't exist anymore. 
if we don't red like, these, these them, same people that are like terrified of impoverished communities like do you want to do something about that you know maybe like fix some of the problems you're seeing no n never never just keep it far away from me and mine right order within 90 days every single agency had to file an equity action plan with the white house if you want to see or view what you will be up against take a look at those plans they're all online under the Office of Management and Budget. <laughs> Since that- Don't most companies have that too? Private companies have a, a, to follow a diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion protocol? I don't think I've ever hey, worked- look, I did, a... I did two, count them, two videos on, on a panel for US sailing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like, I've never had a job where they didn't have some kind of clause that you signed about- uh, I mean, what? Equity and inclusion. So you're never going to believe this, but what she just said about Biden's first executive order, she was lying. Oh. I know it's a shock. That never happens. Oh. They're never just making up total bullshit. Biden's first executive order was to require masks on federal property. His second executive order was to reverse the Trump order, taking us out of the World Health Organization. His third executive order was to set up a COVID response task force, the reverse of a Trump order. His fourth executive order extended foreclosure and, and eviction moratoriums. His fifth executive order froze student debt collection. We could go on, but there's not a fucking thing about equity in his entire first day. <laughs> all of that stuff is, is DEI, Ember. It's all Apparently. De it's all DEI driven. <laughs> all right. I think we're about, we're about done with these ladies for now. Um, with, uh, was it Karen and Sharon or something like that? Yeah. Uh, they were awful. They said stupid stuff. We laughed. Uh, they got more stupid stuff to say, so we might watch some more of their content later on. Or I might watch some of their content over on Ember's channel with Ember. <laughs> if she, uh, yeah. There you go. If she it's wants a, it's to. a distinct possibility. I know we've uh, discussed that uh, previously. It's, uh... There, there's, there's so much. Just remember whenever you hear a motivated conservative most conservatives are just smooth-brained people who just never question what they're told by their higher-ups but when you encounter people like this question literally everything because every single fucking thing that comes out of their mouths is a lie a quick google search for biden's first executive order false I, you know yeah that's true but the things that aren't a lie is what they've written they are going to do in those 900 and some odd pages uh, of Project 2025. They will do everything they promise they will do. Yeah. And almost every single thing is going to hurt somebody. I think they renamed Project 2025 to like project 47 or something like that or no no initial. uh that's that's trump's Different. own internal that's version trump's. agenda 47 agenda 47 it's got a lot of the same things but it has other things that are, so he can pretend that he's not affiliated with project 2025 yeah it's very important since that got leaked right no no he he had it set up um i think as soon as he declared he was running it was like the first thing on his website oh really okay see i, I, I like that I thought it was a, a spinoff of 2025 once uh, they decided that was too toxic to put his to put the Trump branding on because the product 2025. I don't. Is I don't think he cares toxic. about what's toxic. Like he. Re I mean, he. He's the guy saying, grab them by the pussy. I'm going to shoot a guy on Fifth Avenue. He does not care what's toxic. I think he thinks it's a, a bonus for him. Like, it's an extra selling fe feature or some shit. If it's toxic, yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. Some of his people, it is. Some of his voting the constituency, it is. They really want a, a toxic asshole in charge that'll say the awful things to people that they, that they want to say when they bump into a trans person on the subway or... Uh, move in next door to a black person or whatever the stuff that they want to that they want to spout off um trump will say it out loud and they get to say that's my guy uh i could go on yep. and on all right but